the scripture that you just shared, Vicente, is just, I, I had prayed uh, recently that God make something clear to me. And I think I even brought this up recently uh, in a lot, in a other Bible study that somebody, somebody told me that, uh, that, um, oh, what was it? That what was God's, God's purpose for all this going on on earth? You know, God's purpose for sending Jesus Christ, God's purpose for us here on earth. And I said, I told them to glorify him, for him to be glorified. And they told me, this person told me, well, that that's narcissism. No, that's narcissism. And, and I've been praying to God to help me understand how it isn't narcissism, because it says all over scripture, and that's, and I'll go to, like it, we can go to that scripture right now, uh, Psalms 31, 1 through 3. <clears throat> At the beginning it says, In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Turn your ear to me. Come quickly to my rescue. Be my rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me, since you are my rock and my fortress. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. So for God's name, for God's glory, um, it says in, it says in uh, Psalms 143.11, it says, For your name's sake, Lord, preserve my life. In your righteousness, bring me out of trouble. So again, to glorify the Lord. His decisions are to glorify himself, for him to be glorified. But people ask all these questions all the time, like, well, if God, if God, uh, if God is so loving, if God is so this, then why do people, why are people suffering all the time? If God is so loving, then why doesn't he just save everybody? If God is so loving, then this, and if God is so loving, then that, why are people going to hell? And the thing is, God God does love everybody. It, it, John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. He loves the world. He's provided, he's provided that opportunity for the world. It says in different parts of Scripture that, he's, that he wants everybody to be saved. He, in Psalms 5.5, 5, in Psalms 3, in just different areas of the book of Psalms, it says how he hates sin how he hates um he hates sin so yeah he loves the world but he hates sin and every decision is for him to be glorified but god isn't tied to just his love that quality of love Every decision God makes glorifies every single quality of himself. Glory, uh, uh, it glorifies his love. It uh, glorifies his wrath. It glorifies his, his grace. It glorifies his everything, his humility. So he can not only be a God that is glorified in love. You know, he has to be just. He has to be humble. He... And it just completely makes sense to me now when you shared Philippians chapter 2. So God isn't narcissistic. God is glorified in his love, his humble humility, and his and his wrath. You know, if he's going to love, then he's, he, has to, he has to be just as well. Mm. Well, for that question you asked that people say, um, if God is a loving God, why does he, you know, cause or allow suffering? And, uh, I mean, I would ask them to just start in Genesis, book one. God gave us a perfect life. He gave us this gift. We chose, we made that decision for sin. We chose that, that selfish, you know, um, envy to pursue a different path. You know, it was, it was, it was mankind. We decided to choose a different direction. 
So then we learned what sin was. And from that point, we know we, we, we broke this bond with God. Um, and so that's, so that's basically what we had to spend the rest of our you know existence now is reaching is reobtaining that relationship, getting closer back to God. And we could never do it because we are full of sin. And you know, it's, it's the blood of Jesus Christ that is covering that multitude of sins. Um, and so we, we chose that path of suffering and then God again is giving us another way. He's giving us his son as an example, as a guide, as a teacher, but also as, as a, as a sacrifice that will cover our sins and allow us, you know, to rejoin with God. Yeah. Well, God's, Every, every choice God makes is sovereign. And if you read in Romans 9, you, you read about him being, uh, oh, in verse, chapter 9, verse uh, 20, 20, it says, But who are you, a mere human being, to talk back to God? Shall what is formed say to the one who formed it, Why did you make me like this? Does not the potter have the right to make out of the same lump of clay? some pottery for special purposes and some for common use. Yeah. What if God, although choosing to show his wrath and make his power known, bore with great patience, the objects of his wrath prepared for destruction. So there you go. There are some that he did not bless with salvation for his wrath to be glorified. Or with great patience, the object of the wrath, prepared for salvation. I, I just see that right there. I think it's a, a little bit of a blessing to have not been burdened with all this knowledge. I mean, this, this, this fruit of knowledge in one tree, in this perfect Eden, and we didn't have to know everything. We didn't have to know what envy and greed and jealousy we didn't have to know our own sins. We didn't have to know what, what nakedness was. We didn't have to know that there was another way other than goodness, God's way. We could have just known that, and that was such a blessing. We allowed ourselves to fall to deceit, and, you know, we chose we chose to, this path. Yeah. You know, why were we created? You said for, for his namesake, but to glorify the Lord. I thought of John chapter 15, verse 8. NLT says, When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. So bearing much fruit uh, brings God glory. So what do you mean by bearing much fruit? Well, fruits of the Spirit. When I bear love, I'm bringing God glory. When I'm, when, when I'm being joyful... I'm bringing God glory. When I'm being peaceful, I'm bringing God glory. When I'm being uh, self-controlled, I'm bringing God glory. What is it? Faithfulness, goodness. When I'm, when I'm producing all these fruits, it's glorifying the Lord because, like, like Brett said, it's not just me doing these things, but others are being blessed by it. Who benefits by us expressing kindness? Everyone. Everyone does, right? That's, so, and that's what the Lord does with us.